welcome back to Drive It Out. My name is Adam and we are here at the 2022 SEMA show in Las Vegas, Nevada. So many amazing things we're seeing here at the show. The show is great this year. Right now we are outside because I always want to check in with Jeremiah here. This is Jeremiah Prophet of Prophet's Resurrection Land Cruiser and they always bring awesome stuff to the show. I specifically want to ask him about this build behind us here. So how are you doing, Jeremiah? I'm good, Adam. It's good to see you again. Yes, it's yeah. excellent. The show's great this year. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, awesome. lots of stuff to see, bigger than ever. Awesome. And, and some, some cool, you know, some of the best rigs I've ever seen here to awesome. this year, so. Uh, and you guys have been busy too. This one here in particular is way cool. Yeah, thank you. Tell um, us about it. So this is a 1986 FJ60 body off restoration. Um, and it's a kind of a resto mod. We've got a LS3 in here, uh, you know, Chevy V8, 6.2 liters, along with a Toyota 5-speed, back to the Toyota 5-speed transmission, uh, factory transfer case. And that's pretty much it as far as aftermarket stuff, except for a couple of exterior accessories. Uh, pretty authentic looking vehicle, really, when the hood's closed. Um, looks like it might be stock. Yeah. Um, got some cool custom wheels that we designed, easy on K9 roof rack, uh, emu wing, uh, skull wing windows in the back, which are really, really cool. cool. Yeah, kind of a cool stereo system in here. All in all, just sort of a classy sleeper build. Yeah, and people seem to be, are they more looking for that authentic kind of look right now? It's been going that, yeah, it's been going that way for sure. You know, not too much lift, not too big of tires, uh, kind of authentic on the outside, almost looking like it could be stock. And in lots of cases also just more stock. We're, we're doing more and more Toyota DNA, um, but you know, in cases like this, uh, customers from Los or uh, customers from Los Angeles um, needs to pass emissions in California. It's really getting hard to keep these on the road there with all the Toyota stuff because none of the emissions components are supported anymore. Okay. So once your smog pump goes out, and you know, once your EGR valve and all the things go out that you, that are hard to find, the LS is really your best option to uh, be able to pass emissions there. For sure. What yeah. have you seen recently with like uh, the values and the popularity of the 60 series specifically? Oh yeah, good question. So 60 series have gone off the charts, right? In the last couple of years, um, you know, rigs that used to be parts rigs are now good restoration candidates. And, the and so the value of, of really nice ones has gone, you know, tripled or quadrupled. Um, and uh, you know, I'm talking about you know survivors, rusty survivors that used to be you know five to ten grand are now 20, 30, 40 grand. So yeah. the values, um, it, I, I think it's kind of peaking right now, but I mean it's really really gone up, and it's because these are doggone practical rigs and. You know, uh, four door, good heat and air conditioning, relatively comfortable and quiet. You can haul your whole family, um, and so, yeah, but they still look like a classic four by four, right? So it's the, it's kind of what people want when they're thinking about their vehicle. Take a break from their computerized car that drives itself, get something like this, and you know, really feel the road. I'm a big fan of the 60 series specifically, but what, what would you tell people if they're looking at the 60, 80 series? Like, what are the advantage of going with? The 60 as far as being able to customizability or yeah the you know they're actually the advantage to the 60 over the 80 is just the looks of the vehicle because an 80 series is such a huge technology jump um, you know over the course of just a couple of years I mean they added you know coil suspension all the way around and it's a far more drivable chassis it's better on road and off road frankly um, an 80 series but you know they're kind of they kind of look like a baked potato on wheels and they're kind of lumbery and they're, you know, so uh, maybe still a little bit too modern. And this maintains that classic, you know, Land Cruiser look. So that's the, what draws people to this. Uh, it's actually really popular to build a 60 series body on an 80 series chassis. Then you get the best of both worlds. Ah, yeah, yeah, I didn't think about that. That would be, that would be a good idea. Actually, yeah. Now that I think about it. Yeah, yeah. And it's not even that bad. We have one going on at the shop right now. And, you know, you have to shorten and modify the 80 series chassis, um, but it's a it's a really good look. It provides a good stance when you're done. You, get, you know, any number of engine options, and then you kind of get the best of both worlds. But the 60 series look is where people are, you know, that's where they're drawn to right now. Awesome, and you said these are custom wheels. You designed this. Yeah, yeah, so one of the problems with, uh, with wheel choice for any solid axle vehicle is that all of the R&D from the wheel manufacturers has gone into newer vehicles. They're all IFS. And so uh, the offset has to be different. So any kind of 16, 17 inch wheel that's made for, you know, pretty much anything today is made, won't, won't fit on a Land Cruiser without a wheel spacer. Wheel spacers are bad. Um, we won't even install them. So the only way to get a really cool custom wheel is to have it custom made. So the guys at KMC uh, helped me design this wheel and they make them for us. It's to to pretty much the only 16 or 17 inch wheel with a three and three quarter inch back spacing that's not a beadlock that you can get. Okay. 
Uh, how does this compare to other 60 series that you've done recently? Um, you know, it's it, we're doing a lot of Cummins R2.8 uh, diesels, uh, far more of them than the LS. But the Cummins isn't legal in California. So, um, you know, this is a very similar build to what we're doing. Like I said, that authentic look, not so off-roady looking, you know, maybe a few accessories and an engine swap. But this one with the V8, you know, I bet you 10% of the swaps we're doing our V8 swaps versus other engines, and pretty much only for people in California. Okay, I can see that. Yeah. But you can't go wrong with the LS3. No, that's such I a mean, reliable way yeah, to go. yeah, yeah. I mean, there's a reason why half the stuff in the building right inside has got an LS engine of some kind. It's Fords and Teslas and everything else has been LS swapped, right? The unimaginable. Uh, so yeah, it's it's you know it really is hard to beat this engine. It's brand new. It's well supported. You know the engineering is super solid. You know it's going to be around forever. So yeah, it's kind of a no-brainer. Awesome. Now the 60 series, you said it's got a five-speed transmission in it. What kind of uh, accessories did they have with it? Did they offer cruise control in the 60 no, series? No, no, and, and, and no cruise control in the 60 series, and it's kind of an aftermarket bummer to add it, so we don't do that very often. But it's possible, uh, more possible with an automatic behind this this engine than it is with a five-speed. Doing it with a five-speed would be all aftermarket and you know kind of clunky. Okay. Yeah. Now so. What a, outside of the 60 series, what kind of work are you guys doing? I mean, do you still do a lot of 40 stuff? Yeah, we, yeah, it's, I bet you it's half and half. Our 40 series restorations um, are still very, very popular. Um, uh, you know, it's usually a mix of about half 60s, half 40s in the shop. And then we're, do, we're doing more and more 80 series restorations too. So they're, they're, they'll probably, you know, maybe a third, a third, and a third in a few years. But, you know, the 40 series stuff's never going to go away. Um, it's just getting harder to find them. Okay. Now, I remember you mentioned the support. Uh, that Toyota is putting the parts of is that through the GR? Yeah, GR is starting to support some um, more of the old Land Cruiser parts. Okay. Uh, honestly, if they're listening to me right now, not all of the ones that we really need. Um, you know, some of this stuff is kind of silly, and some of the stuff is stuff that's been available for a long time anyway. Um, but, uh, you know, we are very lucky that Toyota does support the 40 Series as much as they do, um, and hopefully they. They'll, they'll continue to do so because a lot of this stuff is starting to dry up. Um, you know, and so if I could get Toyota's ear, that's what I'd tell them. Um, in fact, I'd love to sit down with them and give them a list. Sure, yeah. certainly. That's a, kind of what I was going to ask you as well is, are you seeing avenues for getting things kind of dry up? Is there anything that's been specifically hard to get recently? Oh, it seems like every week we learn about one thing that's not available anymore. And it's, you know, and so you got to find your way around it and then something else dries up and you got to find your way around that and, and the problem is uh, you know especially with respect to body parts um, that that there's really the aftermarket stuff just doesn't compare so it's hard to see OEM parts go um, you know and and sometimes there can be killers for the project right like a, if you can't get a wiper motor anymore and you're out of ones to rebuild you know then it's gonna be tough to restore the whole car nobody wants a vehicle with no windshield wipers you know so we are starting to see some of the important stuff dry up um, you know, and we're, we're having to move and dodge and figure out alternatives. Yeah, but it looks like you guys are still going really strong at the shop. You got a lot of projects going. Yeah, and yeah, we're, we've got more than ever. I mean, I, I don't even know how many rigs we have in the pipeline, something like uh, 36 months of work, uh, you know, in the pipeline. Um, you know, we still have a really big group of people, um, 21 employees, okay. you know, we're building lots and lots of trucks. And, uh, you know, it's, I, I haven't seen a slowdown at all, which is great. All right, that's awesome. Remind people where you guys are at. You guys are in western Colorado. Right? Yeah, we're on the western slope of Colorado between Grand Junction and Montrose in a little town called Austin. Um, kind of remotely located on purpose because I think if we were out somewhere where the public could see us, I wouldn't, you know, you can, you already know I like to talk. So I, I, we hadn't get anything done. So yeah, Western Slope of Colorado uh, website is resurrectionlandcruisers.com. Uh, we have a really cool YouTube series of uh, 64 episodes of Land Cruiser content um, on there is Resurrection Land Cruisers. Yep, and I always tell people they got to check out the YouTube series because the, the stuff you guys show that you're building there is just so fun to watch. It's yeah, yeah, I love our content, um, you know, on YouTube, and we get people who binge watch it and call and just, oh, I can't believe I didn't know about your series. So it is worth watching, even though the, the episodes are pretty long. You know, it's a time commitment. Yeah, you guys got a great group of guys there, it seems, too. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we're so, we're so lucky to have who we have. I mean, we, our guys... Our, you know, we've got new people because we're always trying to increase, you know, our, our capacity and add, you know, people to our team. But, I mean, we've got guys that have been there for 20 years and, you know, it's just a, it's like a big family. You know, we share the mission and we have a blast. Awesome. 
So awesome. Now, specifically SEMA this year, we've got Battle of the Builders going on, all that. What can you tell us about, about this year? Oh boy, Battle of the Builders this year was a lot of fun. I mean, I always look forward to coming down here and, and, and filming that and, you know, seeing all the trucks. Um, the quality of, you know, in general, contest-wide, the quality of the rigs that we've seen is just going up and up and up. But specifically this year, since we changed my category from truck and off-road to sort of off-road and 4 by 4 only, um, I didn't have a, as big a pool of vehicles to choose from, you know, because they removed about half my category. So, you know, I want off-road builders to learn about Battle of the Builders, to, you know, to start early and build something cool and get it a spot in SEMA, get in the contest, and, because it really is a great opportunity for builders to, you know, hit a, a really big stage and make tons of contacts. And through Battle of the Builders is, you know, I've, that's, that's kind of why I'm the judge. It's, it's why I know so many people down here right now. I mean, it's a lot of opportunity, you know, worked into that program. So um, off-road builders specifically, I really encourage them to, you know, to get their, their uh, you know, their creations into the contest um, because it's definitely worth it. Well, so awesome to see you again here at the show. Of course, yeah. Love checking in, love your work, and I got really excited about this 60 Series here, but that's right up my alley. But thanks again for joining us. To remind people again where they can find you guys. Sure. So, ResurrectionLandCruisers.com. Uh, Profits Resurrection Land Cruisers TV on YouTube, and they're doing handles now. We're going to be Pro Cruiser. Um, also, we're Pro Cruiser on Instagram, and then Resurrection Land Cruisers on Facebook. Awesome. Uh, thanks again for being here, and thanks guys for watching this video. Look for all the other awesome content that we have here at the show. There's some amazing stuff to see this year. 2022 SEMA show, Las Vegas, Nevada. Thanks guys. You found us on YouTube. We're on Instagram at Drive It Out. I am on Instagram at Naturally Aspirated Adam. We're DriveItOut.com. We will see you in the next video.